A quick shout out to Talkspace for sponsoring this episode of the Smoshcast. I often even notice that when I'm journaling by myself, I'm still not asking the tough questions. You learn a lot there, like your inability to tell yourself that you love yourself. When I watch Smosh, I recognize that Anthony was the cute one, but I would stand Ian because he was the funny one. T. <laughs> The Chartney conspiracies are pretty enjoyable, I will say. I, for years, have gotten DMs being like, mm -hmm. I know you and Courtney are dating. I see the signs. If I ever look cute or sexy in a photo, they'll be like, how does Shane feel about this? <laughs> Dude, on that tip of, we were joking about Kevin's actually secretly being behind a green screen this whole time. There's this Twitch streamer who had a refrigerator in the background forever and everyone wanted to know it was inside the fridge, right? And then one day it, he moves it and it's just a cardboard cut out of So the awesome, I saw that. That review so was good. so great. Oh, um, I love that stuff. Yeah, it's fun to know. Thanks um, to the podcast listeners for pointing out that apparently my microwave is haunted. Yeah, uh, what? I never noticed that. I, I haven't either. Um, now I will be watching. I'm terrified. You know, I don't trust technology, so maybe it is possessed by the devil. Yeah, or maybe probably. just the technology just doesn't doesn't like trust you or something. That yeah, probably does it look like it doesn't have demon eyes right now. I don't see any demon eyes My anywhere microwave. other than yours. <laughs> ha 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 ha. Well, your <laughs> key your keyboard is uh, possessed. I damn right. So. Take that. You need someone to save your house again? Duh. <laughs> 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 I say I had my place saged. I think I talked about that though. How did it, did it didn't it, do anything? Didn't do anything? I mean, maybe, nice. maybe maybe placebo effect made me feel like nice for a few days. Sure. But you know, so, like I, I have a little incense thing that I burn up there sometimes. I just light 1500 candles. You that do. Always, that always works. I have so many candles. Yeah. How Let's many see. candles do you think you could count them right now? Uh, in this room, I have one, two, three. I just have three, but I also have some incense uh, sticks over there. Um, and then I have a candle in my bathroom and some more incense. I just love like, sm like good smells, man. I think it's like, good to have not? candles. Like there should always be one in the bathroom. Always, always something smelling good or near your bedroom. Kitchen, I mean, unless you're cooking something nice, but then living room area, definitely. I used to feel so weird about having different smelling candles on though. I get that. I think that's fine. That that makes sense. Unless it's a good cocktail of smells, you know? I mean, you know, you get that, you get that teak wood and tobacco, you mix that with some, yeah. some amber and I don't know, like. I'm gotta... conflicted because I love smells like red apple but I feel like that's very much attached to like the holidays. So I have all my yeah. red apple candles like hidden away for when Christmas time comes up. Yeah, yeah, you're talking Yankee Candle Christmas memories sent yeah. right there, uh, um, which is great. Sure, my guy. But it's always gonna remind me of my grandma's house. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> um, dude, can I actually talk about, I'm so shocked and concerned at how invasive my spiders in my apartment are. Oh, really? Like, it's just, it just felt like never in my life have I felt like I'm in their space. Like they, these oh, spiders. Oh, they've, they've conquered it. They're just like, I'm just like oh, the audacity because they're putting mm -hmm. webs in areas that I'm like, I'm clearly walking through this area all the time. And yet they're, they're just like, yeah, I'm just gonna set up camp right here in front of your freaking doorway. Those like, mother I just don't know what I'm doing differently. I, I, how maybe, many spiders? How many spiders do you have? Now, uh, would you I, guess? I just, I just am constantly walking through webs, and I haven't. But they seen are, any they movie. are web building spiders. Yes. Yes. See, I, I have zero issue with web building spiders because they pick a location. I am aware of where they're at. We can have a truce. I, and I know that they're going to be catching flies and fruit flies and stuff. So I say, hey. You've picked your corner. You're fine with that. I'm giving you a permit to stay there and work there, but don't be showing up in weird locations. Yeah. I mean, my my logic is if I see you, if you're in my way, if you're in a space that I like, if I see you, you've basically lost survival of the fittest. You failed oh. as a spider in your stealth and ability to remain unseen. And I'm like, well, you lose. Sometimes I'll be like, well, if you're really not in my way, I'll let you be there. But as soon as you get too close for comfort, I have to get rid of you. One time when I was getting ready for bed, I saw in the corner of my room, right by my trash can, 
not one, but two huge ass daddy long legs had set up camp right next to my bed. And I was like, bro, you guys, I was like, I guess they're fine because they're daddy long legs, but they were. I, I don't just, think daddy long legs are technically spiders either. I think they're they're classified as something else, but they look like spiders and they're creepy. What are they? So whatever. Uh, I don't know. There's something, I, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they're not technically a spider. Doesn't matter, right? We're talking about just bugs sure. that crawl around. I, for me, it's spiders specifically that In I will place? let live, that I will mm. let live. If if I, even if they're, even if they are the type that are walking around, if I'm like, okay, look, man, you're cool. Just kind of like you, I'm like, just don't be sneaking up too close to me. All yeah, right? yeah. Uh, I found a pretty decent sized jumping spider, which are my favorite one. They're probably my favorite bug. <sighs> I love jumping spiders. They're Spooky. super nice. They're super nice. They'll crawl on your hands. And they won't bite you and stuff. That's good. Um, I just I get nervous. Like, they're going to jump at my eye. No, they're not going to jump at your eye. Why would they jump at your eye? They jump around and it's like they don't know what I don't want. You just see a jumping spider and she's like, hey, man, we're cool. But I'm going to get that <laughs> eye. <laughs> I'm going to get your eyes, Courtney. I should probably intro this cast as we as we as we pod or cast this pod. Oh, I guess. Um, I guess. Yeah, you can notice it's pretty empty today. Just hear two voices. It is just me and Shane. Damon was supposed to be in it, but he's he's moving. Well, he moved, and his Spectrum Internet or his internet is uh, giving him problems, so he might pop in later. But his... it's just me and this little dumb bitch right now. Oh, thanks. Great. Awesome. So you like spiders? I love spiders. Um... <laughs> I love, I love spiders. I don't get too many bugs in my place and I don't know why, but I rarely Yeah, because you're on the first floor or I don't know. Yeah, let's give, you, my loca let's give my sorry. location away. Sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> just kidding. But I've gotten spiders a couple times and I always let them live and they always kind of just disappear after a day. That's so good. I don't know what's up. I'm almost offended that they don't find my apartment. <laughs> They're like, eh, this party's lame. That they don't want to stay here. This party's lame. I'm a dip. Hey, this place <laughs> sucks. I'm out of here. <laughs> is that how spiders sound to you? Yeah, this is what spiders sound like. Shut up. I'll just be, I'll be asleep in my, uh, <laughs> in my bed late at night. And all of a sudden I'll hear a spider catch a fly in the other room. It's just like, it's like, hey, I got you. I got you. Hey, you get your Hands up. I'm not going to get my hands off your spider. Oh, my God. That's you know what that sounds conversation. like? That sounds like that character where, like, where it's like someone standing in front of the pyramids going, hey, these are older than you think they are. <laughs> hey, these are older than you think. <laughs> I got a phone. It's a Nokia. I used to sometimes get a random bee that came into my apartment. That's awesome. Yeah. But in apartment 23. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> See, a bee. So so I've I think I've told this story before. The the only insect that I am just absolutely unforgiving towards is wasps. If I see a yeah, wasp of course. and you get near me, I, it is it is to the death immediately. Or hornets though. Well, sure, but wasps, the, if your legs are dangling as you're flying, that's too cocky, you're going mm. down. And I had a wasp fly into my apartment years ago. And this <gasps> is when I, I lived in a one bedroom with a loft, so the ceiling was huge. And this wasp was flying all over the place. And I had a broom and a and a Nerf football. And I was just running around the room trying to throw the football at the wasp. That is the most and, Shane way and to it would, deal it with it an insect. Swoop, it would swoop down at me and I'd have the broom like swinging around at it. It was a boss battle. It was Dark Souls. Well, that's the thing. God, Dark Souls. It took, it took like a half hour. It was a half hour battle. I was bloody and beaten at the end of it. Dude, uh, wasps are territorial. That's why That's why they're so aggressive. Well, they so can't be aggressive. territorial inside my apartment. Well, I'm territorial inside my apartment. Okay, valid. Uh, yeah, I'm terrified of bees and I have like no reason to be. It's weird, I love bees. I love bees and my mom has an obsession with bees because they're so cute and they do such good things. But I'm also, I'm like, you're so cute, stay away from me. I really am scared that I'm gonna get stung. Even though stay I'm not allergic. Stay away from me and let me eat your spit. That's gotta be weird for them <laughs> that they like spit all this stuff everywhere and then occasionally these giant creatures come and steal all their spit. Dude, I have this obsession with bee TikTok. There are people that get called to places where it's like, oh, there's a hive being built in my wall and they go into the wall, take it out, get them, find the queen. I've it's been on awesome. the YouTube. I've been on the YouTube. Uh, Damn, that's bee a commitment. Kit. And it's 30 minute videos of them like uncovering 
just massive hives inside yeah. people's walls. I mean, so hives nice. that weigh like 15 pounds. It's, it's crazy. Awesome. Like some some of those bee people will like not even have gloves on dealing with the bees. Yeah, they're so casual. So casual. It. So what's up? What else? What else? What else? What else going on? I didn't shower <laughs> before this podcast. Ew. The, the, this day has gone pretty fast. Ew. And I didn't have time. Uh, so I worked out right before this, and so I'm all gross and sweaty Stinky right now. Pod. But I'm glad that nobody can smell me through uh, YouTube and or whatever podcast yeah. network you're listening to this on. Not yet. We'll get there um, technology wise. I've, dude, I've been like on a health kick lately. I'm trying to like. Yeah, you've been like cooking healthy. Really, like, what the hell? Oh man, I, I just, I don't know. Like, it's easy with quarantine to kind of like falter and just kind of resort to ordering food a lot and not eating as healthy. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I'm i on a kick. I, I'm just like, I'm viewing food as a means of making myself stronger. So I'm trying to just put as much good stuff in my body as possible. Pretty I'm good. Like, I'm like eating tons of fruits and vegetables and I immediately feel so much better because of it. It's you sound like a video game character that's like <laughs> Literally, it feels like it. It feels like when Mario eats the mushroom and gets bigger. That's how I feel <laughs> after eating asparagus. So uh, what's like so what do you yeah, what are like your favorite things, the healthy things to cook right now? So my diet's been insanely simple. Uh because I'm I love to cook. Um and I will cook like I will attempt to cook fancier more complicated things. But when I'm just cooking for myself, I am very often super, not lazy, but I'm just as basic as possible. My go-to thing is I saute either like, uh, usually it's a chicken breast, maybe it's a salmon filet, or a very occasionally a steak. Then I steam up some broccoli, or I throw some asparagus in the oven, or I, or carrots or radishes or some some for, form of vegetable, right? You gotta have that. And then my my favorite is throw some quinoa in the rice cooker, bam, that's dinner. And I do that 90% of the time. This fancy as hell. Besides that, I've never had a diet. I've never followed diets. Um, I know it works for some people, but for me, my mindset has always been a matter of like, I'm going to try to, I need to eat these things every day, right? So I'm yeah. like, okay, what, what are all the, what are the healthiest foods? Okay. I'm going to eat at least one of each of those today, you know? Mm -hmm. So like Greek yogurt, a bunch of fruits and vegetables, um, on top of whatever I have for, for dinner and lunch. Uh, <laughs> oh, nuts are incredible. That's it. Dude. Walnuts, almonds. Yeah, dude. You're sounding like a lot like when I went because I I'm I'm the same way where I don't really follow diets except for the time when I went vegan for almost a year. Right. And ultimately, it was like it just caused me to snack less, and I lost my baby fat so quickly. My friends even were like, "Dude, you look really skinny. It's kind of scary." And I just straight up was it was just because. It wasn't snacks weren't accessible because my dad's mm. house was filled with just cheese and stuff. And like interesting. But yeah, it makes a difference when you really it's off. That's an obvious statement to say. But yeah, I just think I think a lot of people for sure, because I think a lot of people are very focused on not eating a lot of stuff like mm -hmm. not eating sweets, not drinking soda. Mm -hmm. And my mindset's always been the opposite of like, OK, I need to drink 100 ounces of water today. I need to eat an orange and an apple and some celery and some asparagus and some spinach. And then by the time you've focused on eating all that stuff, you're mm -hmm. so distracted that you don't end up eating sweets because you've been eating all this mm. other stuff. To be fair, I'm not trying to lose weight. So I know the mindset's very different probably. Mm -hmm. I, and I know every body is different. Like I'm not a nutrition expert. I'm not a fitness expert. Yeah. And what works for me may not work for other people. So I'm not And you don't have to, to clarify that. This. It's not like you're telling these people like, you guys all should eat like me. You never said that. So don't worry about it. Um For sure, but I don't I don't want it to be insinuated. Dude, earlier in quarantine, I like started to gain weight. And I gain weight in like very specific places on my body. It's not like it's a like throughout thing. Because I was like, well, I'm always home. I'm I want to be happy and like food makes me happy. So I just was constantly buying donuts, cookies, 
uh, sweets, all types of candy. I was ordering food all the time. Um, but I, I did eventually like get into cooking more. Like I totally love getting broccoli. I saute it in some freaking garlic and, uh, and salt and pepper and stuff and butter. I like using butter. Nice. But yeah, I was really bad. I'm still, and I'm getting better. I think what I like to do is I try and replace things in my diet. So mm -hmm. instead of the donuts and stuff, I was like, okay, I want something sweet. So I'm going to just get some fruits instead. And I literally only give myself totally. those options, like replacing soda or alcohol with kombucha. So I think that totally works. Yeah. For me, for me, the motivation, because like I think so many people are motivated entirely by appearance. Mm -hmm. And I think there's nothing wrong with desiring to look a certain way, but mm -hmm. if it's your entire motivation, I, th I, for me personally, that always crumbles at a certain point. Yeah. For me, the motivation is like, like I said, when I have a day where I eat super healthy and I work out and I'm doing all this stuff, the next day I always just feel mm -hmm. so much better. Mm -hmm. And that's my motivation is that I'm like, I'm gonna be stronger and by mm -hmm. eating this, I will be stronger. Uh, yeah. That kind of mindset keeps me going better, but. Change is always constant. But these days, it feels like there's something new to grapple with every day. We may be adjusting to this new normal, but it's still stressful and it's important to talk about it and seek support. And Talkspace is a perfect place to go to. It's an online therapy here to give you that support because we all know we need it. 2020 is brutal, all right? There's nothing wrong with admitting that you need to talk about it. And with Talkspace, you can match with a licensed therapist from the comfort of your device and you can reach out 24 seven. Whenever something's on your mind, you'll hear back daily, five days a week. Probably the best thing about Talkspace is it's a fraction of the cost of in-person therapy. The bottom line is that we all need someone to talk to and Talkspace wants to give the licensed support we deserve at a price we can afford. We have a special deal for you guys. You can get $100 off your first month on Talkspace to match with your perfect therapist. Go to Talkspace.com or download the app. Make sure to use code SMOSH to get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's code SMOSH, S-M-O-S-H, at Talkspace.com. Yeah, I just, I can I don't think being hot is a personality trait. Like, sorry. A lot of times, obviously, I when I work out, whether I notice a difference in my how I look or not, I just feel more confident and I feel, like, it also exercise, it gives you endorphins and, and all those things, like, it and, like when people are sad, sometimes they can go work out and feel a little bit better. Like that's what my therapist has told me to do. Exercising and taking care of yourself isn't like because you shouldn't do it because you feel like gross if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. No, no. So, so I know exactly what you're saying. And there's a specific reason I've been so motivated or just been doing a great job of, of doing these things lately. And it's because I recognized that I was measuring my life in achievements. Mm. And I dropped that because before my mindset was off, and I, I don't do it too much with fitness, but it still was affecting me, where I'm thinking, I need to achieve this, or I need to achieve this weight, or I need to achieve this appearance in order to feel happy. And mm -hmm. that's always gonna screw you over. It's why I'm so about body positivity is because if you feel, if you recognize that you are worth, you are worth it as you are, mm -hmm. you deserve to be happy as you are, then doing these things becomes a gift to yourself. Yeah, it's as even opposed more frosting to, on the cake, yeah. As opposed to, I need to work out and eat healthy because I'm a piece of shit. It's, yeah. holy crap, I love myself and I can give myself the gift of feeling better and becoming stronger totally. if I do this for myself. Totally. Like I miss, I miss personal training so much because I was not only able to like make myself feel stronger, but having someone there who believed in me and supported me and was helping push me further mm -hmm. in person, like was was awesome and it's hard working out at home man i don't know how you have done it so consistently like you no no i feel like no no fans or listeners know like your like your secrets your how you've gotten to uh this i think it's really more consistency 
I don't work. I don't feel like I work out like crazy. There's a lot of people I know. You do though. But I mean, I mean like when they work out, they are lifting far more than me. They're li like doing intense mm. workouts. I just feel like I'm I'm just constantly, I, I just like to do something every day. And it doesn't have to be that much. But um, uh, like for me, my quarantine workouts, because I'm not at a gym, I don't have access to weights. A yeah. lot of times I'm just doing like, I'm just doing push-ups and pull-ups and crunches and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, one of the things my dad was the one who told me about this, but I think it works is if you get a deck of cards and you keep flipping cards and whatever the number is on that card, you do that many push-ups and you just keep flipping cards and it just kind of keeps you motivated, keeps you going. I don't have like a set routine of like, okay, I'm going to do three sets of 10 of this and this and this and this. I often just work out until I can't yeah. anymore. I'm just like, all right, I'm gonna push myself as hard yeah. as I can. I used to at the gym be like, okay, six sets of 10 of everything, 30 minutes of core, like just unnecessary stuff. But yeah, I'm to the point now where I pretty much just work out my arms until I'm like, okay, that's fine. Like I was gonna do, like I even, I even tweeted about it. I was thinking about posting my workout routines because I even told you I have like my crazy butt workout that I call the mountain, um, which is very, it definitely works. And I'm very happy that I have that. So I could be like, okay, I'm gonna do two mountains today. That's a solid butt workout. It was like, I tweeted it and then literally like, the protests and everything started happening. And I was like, this is not the time to like make my sure. own content in any way. And like now I'm, st and then, and now we're working again, like in the studio and stuff, social distance mm -hmm. style. So like, I just don't know if I'll ever, I'll ever get around to it. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah, you're right. Just like working out until you feel good. I like there's, there's yoga YouTube channels that I follow that I'm like, if I'm too lazy to push myself, at least playing a video to like do some my mom was a fitness trainer for like most oh, yeah. of her life. And her, what she always said was the best workout is the one that you're gonna do. I think it's whatever that you're motivated and you have fun doing, do that. Like if you love rock climbing, rock climb. If you love jogging, jog. Um, if you like playing tennis, play tennis. Whatever physical activity you love, you can just do that. And that's gonna be enough. Like you just need to mm -hmm. be moving every day for a certain amount of time. Yeah. I think setting goals like, um, okay, I wanna be able to do 20 push ups in a row is mm -hmm. gonna be a great one because then you're working towards something and then you can get that accomplishment. Appearance is weird because you can, regardless of if you actually do look good or not, you can wake up one day and just be like, I hate how I look today. Yeah. And then that motivation's gone because it's just based on such a fickle thing. Whereas if there's a number, if there's like an accomplishment yeah. that you're working towards. I commend you for your consistency. I think I was in this, like, it, it's crazy, dude. I, I asked Alexa the other day, it's been 135 days since our first day of quarantine. Oh my God. Can you believe that? 135 days since we like got back from Australia. And I was in the beginning, I was like, I was obviously, I was in the best shape of my life when we got home from Australia or around Australia time. And so I was desperate. I was working out every day, mm. doing everything I could. I was like, just want to maintain what I have. And then I was, ru I was running every day, everything. And like, then I just like, I've started to lose motivation. And I, but I think I'm kind of grateful in the way it's like, I don't have to do that every day, man. For sure. Like, for sure. What am I pushing myself for? For sure. And also beating yourself up is only going to keep you down. Exactly. Like I totally appreciate working out because it like when when you're pe have pent up stress or anxiety about what's going on in the world, exercise is an excellent way of getting that energy out of your system. For sure. And that's something like my therapist told me. She's like, "Well, no that it is benefiting." So yeah, but like ultimately it's like <laughs> I don't need to be buff to sit on my couch all day, you know? Like I don't need like <laughs> I don't need those things. I, I think it's good to feel it's it's whatever you want to do to make you feel good. Like you said, yeah, rock climbing or just freaking sitting down and drawing all day. Like mm -hmm. as long as you're stimulating yourself in a way that helps you like, dude, I finally finished a, a diary for the first time since middle school. Oh, snap. Uh, and it's I, I it's really cute. I tweeted the other day or, or yesterday or something about it. And like I asked all the fans to show me what their diaries looked like. Having something like that too, like journaling, because you've you journal a little bit, right? I do, yeah. Not 
as consistently as you. I, yeah, I'm like, I'm almost every day I try. Yeah, I don't. And when I do, it's rarely, I rarely write about myself. Mine's more like thoughts on things. So I'm not talking about my day. There's not much information on myself in it. It's more like, this is my thought on love. And this yeah. is what I think love is. And I talk, <laughs> that's an example. That's a good example. It's a valid example. Occasionally when things are really bad or really good, I'll write a letter to myself of like, if it was someone like treating it like it was a friend of like, hey, you need to know this right now. You need to hear this right now. Sometimes I even write like, I love you to me, just to myself, because like, I think it's important to tell yourself that whether it's in writing or no, out loud. I think, that's, I think that's great. I remember I remember uh, it was like a decade ago, The Secret and all those types of books and yeah. stuff were out. And it was a lot about like gratitude journaling and all this stuff. And it obviously it was based on this idea that it's like, if, if you write about your intentions, they will magically come to you. I don't personally believe that there's some magic force that's drawing everything you want to you. But I do think writing down what makes you happy in life is gonna make you happier. Mm -hmm. And also writing down goals is gonna help you focus on those goals and get them. Yeah. So I think a lot of those things really are beneficial on like a psychological level. It makes perfect yeah. sense. And it's nice because it's more than just 160 characters on Twitter where for you just sure. kind of like tweet your feelings. You and it's also really... for yourself. It's yeah. so for yourself and you feel it because yeah. you feel, you know it's true. Your you words know, are you just as valid true. in an empty room. Yeah, because I, well, but also I often question myself whenever I'm posting something on social, as genuine as it feels, there's always a part of me that's questioning whether or not I was genuine about it. You know what I mean? Like, cause I'm, yeah, I'm voice, tweeting yeah. about something. So I'm like, is how much of me is looking for affirmation from other people with mm -hmm. this? Whereas mm -hmm. when you write it entirely for yourself, it's totally private. You know that's your real intentions. And there's it helps yeah. you learn about yourself in that way. Agreed. You get like you get you can really dive into what you're feeling. And I feel like one of the one of the fans was like, Oh yeah, my ther therapist um wants me to get a journal. And I'm like, dude, therapy and journaling, that's like such a group that is and I said, I was like, that's excellent self-love because and that's the healthiest way to um, organize your thoughts. And like, and we, I feel the same way about Twitter. Like, cause sometimes I feel like I'm not saying enough. And so people will misconstrue literally anything that I say. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like, I like, I think you feel the same way too. Like I like to be able to, especially it's harder right now, but like Twitter used to be like this really fun, silly place where I get to make people laugh with for just sure. like funny content. It's uh, it's obviously been a vehicle for other things lately, but mm -hmm. yeah, we haven't really been the type to always put out our thoughts on everything that's going on in the world because it's like just also like, I'm not trying to make everything about me. You know? I don't I, I don't put my personal thoughts out there that often because I also don't think that I'm that smart. <laughs> so I I don't I don't ever feel comfortable putting my opinions out there because I'm always questioning whether I'm wrong. I think that's good to have that though. I can, it's hard for me to adamantly fight for a lot of things. I, I will retweet people who word them perfectly and I'm yes. like, this is the person we should Amplify to. those voices. But I mean, when I'm yeah. talking my myself, my own POV, I'm constantly questioning it. I'm constantly changing it. Um, and even like Even like now, talking about this health stuff, like I said, I'm not an expert and I'm often gonna question, I'm like, oh, can my workouts be better? Probably, am I doing something wrong? Maybe, am I working out too hard and is that hurting me? Possibly, I'm oh my constantly gosh. asking that. I just, whatever, but anyways, going back, <laughs> journaling stuff is great because I think it it really for me I often even notice that when I'm journaling by myself I'm still not asking the tough questions you learn a lot there like your inability to tell yourself that you love yourself mm -hmm. is always an interesting one and just how immediately it, uh, whether it becomes negative or positive when you're journaling there's a lot that that you can learn yeah, you like even just when you're talking to a therapist, like there's this really cool picture I saw where it's two people 
one per, a person and a therapist and what the person is saying is this tangle of thread and then it's going across to the therapist and the therapist what they're doing is organizing your thoughts into a mm -hmm. ball of yarn like because totally. when you're just when you're able to just like let it all out and just talk about your feelings you'll sometimes just figure it out on your own if you just keep it all inside and just think you're dealing with it internally that's like you're you're stopping halfway putting it like. putting it out there is so huge because you don't you often don't realize how, for lack of a better word, how stupid yeah. a thought can be until you put it on paper or you tell someone and you go, holy crap, I was telling myself that. I was telling myself I wasn't worth it mm -hmm. because of some dumb reason. Yeah, it's, as soon as it's you all say communication. It out loud or put it on paper, it really puts it into perspective. Yeah, it's communicating with yourself. Yeah, because you're the only one who has ac full access to your brain. Nobody else yeah. does. So it's an important responsibility to like at least look inward every now and again. I think it's like, I, I it sounds stressful the way you said it, Shane, of like, I, I, am I stupid? Am I being dumb enough? Do I not? Am I not being smart enough with everything that I'm saying? Like, it's... It's that sounds stressful, but I think it's also important for people to always look inward at least once in every situation. Yeah. And it's it's sort of stressful sometimes if I have to make a decision or if I, you know, deciding whether it's the right thing or not. But it's saying like, oh, I love myself for who I am and that I don't have to be super smart and I don't have yeah. to have the answers for me to love myself. It's OK to yeah, be dumb. Well, sometimes yeah. on certain things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you like also recognizing that your own voice, you you deserve to be listened to, even if it's just you listening to yourself and like what your true For sure. intentions are and stuff. Uh, I will say, so this is something that I don't think I've told anyone. Ooh. This is, okay, this is Shane wow. Top. Shane Top secret. <laughs> Shane Top secret time. <laughs> ear, 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 ear. Um, I don't think I brought this up before, but so I have a bunch of journals for different things, right? Uh, okay. Some that are more like silly, um, oh. where I'll write down joke ideas and stuff like that. And then I have some that are like gratitude type journals or whatever. But I have one that um, I don't, it's sometimes tough to write in it, but I have had it for a long time. I've put in a, a few entries um, and I call it a book of praise and uh, every time I write ah. in it, every time I write in it, I pick, usually I pick a person. I pick a person that I know. And for now, in general, it's always, it's usually a friend or someone, or a coworker or just someone I know. And I write about what makes them awesome. Oh, I, about, I started a book like that forever you write ago. About, you write about like what makes them, what's so incredible about them. And you just, you go down that. And I think the ultimate challenge with it is as you keep writing entries is you run through all the people that you know you love and you start getting to people that it's a little more conflicted. Mm. And it's about picking people that it's like, I really don't like this person. All right, though, let's try to see what's great about them. Yeah. Like, like, like what's what is like, try to find that. And s sometimes I'll pick like a thing and I'll just mm -hmm. praise that thing like I'll. I'll be like, ah, uh, doing the laundry. And I'll write about what's so awesome about doing the laundry. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have I have one of those and. That's good. Cause then if you like, if you've written a page about somebody and then you're like in a fight with them, mm -hmm. uh, you can like go back and read the page and be like, oh, I gotta remember what's more important. For but sure. yeah, I think I've tried that a couple of times. I, I, I think that's a good idea. I definitely want to do that. And on a selfish note, it's great because it gets me out of my own head and it gets me focused on other people. Absolutely. So. Cool. Yeah, dude. Pretty sick. That's really tight. It's honestly very tight. Whoa, mega dope. Holy crap. Ultra sweet. Just make these text that, tones. That sounds like a gum now. Yeah. Uber cool. Uber cool sounds like a gum. Sick as f <laughs> Yeah, what else going on? I have been playing Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. Nonstop. That's all I've been doing. That's uh, awesome. That's, that's been my self-care, is uh, being a samurai warrior. Thank it God. looks really cool. Thank God video games have been off the chain this year. Mm -hmm. uh, it has helped me get through this quarantine. Yeah, I started playing Uncharted and I, I want to go play the Last of Us games again. 
And then I also, what other game did I really want to play again? I don't know. I just like, I, that's the thing with my motivation thing. Why are you smirking? Why are you uh, smirking? Just laughing at what a possible video game you want to play. Uh, you're looking to play one of the putt putt games again. Uh, no, I've never played a f***ing putt putt game. I have Sims on my computer. I remember when I bought my computer and I was like, I'm going to learn Premiere and I didn't. Uh, there's time. There's, There's plenty time. of time. I will There's do it. There's plenty of time. I've been learning other things like directing full on sketches, mm -hmm. shit like that. But uh, yeah, Sims was fun for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Just making people's babies, seeing what their babies look like. Quarantine has gone on so long that like, yeah, like what do we do? So another thing I've done, I'm just starting to get creative now. Like I think I fully realized I'm like, whatever, I'm living my introvert life and I'm just going for all in. Cause I was having difficulty finding TV shows and movies to watch. Mm. And I ended up not watching anything. Cause I would turn on Netflix and I'd just be like, there's too many things. Yeah. And I would turn it off. So I've been picking a director. Oh yeah. And then I started the, their first movie they ever made and I watch all their movies. So start smart, to so smart. Um, I need to do that with like Wes Anderson or something. Or you could do it with like an actor too. That could be fun. Oh, to just start dude. with like Brad Pitt and just watch his first movie and watch him grow older through all his movies. Pretty cool. Uh, I was on like a, a a corny rom com type kick where, what did I start with? The first one I watched, was uh, legally went legally blonde, clueless, uptown girls. Um, then another uh, a weird Reese Witherspoon movie where it's like Owen Wilson's in it and Paul Rudd. Owen Wilson and or, uh, Paul Rudd and Reese Witherspoon have been in a few movies together. They're an odd duo. Anyway, the what was the the movie was called How Do You Know? It was such a weird movie, dude. It was Reese Witherspoon and Paul Rudd and Owen Wilson is like this other side dude in it. And it's like these two people's lives who are so separate. The only thing that they have in common is they both know people who live in the same luxury apartment building. And like, it's the most dialogue heavy, wordy, neurotic script. And it's like, you literally have to be physically unable to change the channel or get off your couch <laughs> to be able to want to sit and watch this whole movie. But at the end, there's this like random scene that didn't even have anything to do with the main characters that you just like watch. And it made me fucking cry. It was like, it was like this single mother's giving birth and then her boyfriend comes in and proposes to her and they like happen to be in the room and I'm, and then, and then they like, I, 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 I have a stroke right now. This the entire movie, movie goes me. and it, none of it makes sense. And at the very end, it, it, nothing happens. The whole movie is just dialogue. And at the very end, Owen Wilson has to take Marley to the vet to get put down. <laughs> Dude, I hate, can I, y'all hot take? I hate the movie Marley and Me. It, those movies, it, you know exactly what you're gonna get with those movies. You never, you never get out of what the, yeah. one of those movies without shedding a tear, no matter how hard you try. It's like, oh, you want to go watch my dog Skip? Nah, -uh. I know what's gonna happen. It's so weird. Even like, if it's even if it's the best, even the best possible outcome is always gonna be the dog dies every time. Dude, it's like literally a trailer that's like, hey, are you in need of a good cry? Come on it's, in. It's just brutal. They are always brutal. I just, ah, like literally my dog Skip, I remember watching that in theaters and you think it gets towards the very end. It's the last, and I'm sorry, I'm spoiling it. So. Spoilers for if, my dog Skip warning. If you don't want my dog Skip spoiled for you, uh, the whole thing plays out and you're like, this was great. This was a happy story. And then it goes to a montage at the end where the boy goes off to college and then it's like this this voiceover and it's just like, and then eventually I got word that Skip died and all this stuff. And I'm just like, yeah, f you. <laughs> oh, we, were so, we were almost out of here. I was almost out of the theater. And oh I my God. See, I just hated Marley and me because I was stressed out at how they, hold on. I think someone's banging on my door. One second. Uh -oh. Talk and entertain them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Hey guys, welcome to Shane Alone Cast. Uh, now, the fun thing about Shane Alone Cast is that it's just me. Uh, I hope you're uh, doing really nice on this Wednesday or Friday or whatever day you're listening to this. I hope you have a nice cup of tea with you. Is it chamomile? Jeez. Is it sleepy time? Green, perhaps? <laughs> Hi, all right. 
What's going what on? What were you what was saying? That? Uh, what, someone what, threw a package at, at my door, like physically threw it. That's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah, but it's like my Barnes and Noble books on female leadership. Was it a so was it a frisbee? Fun. Yeah, <laughs> in a package. Yeah. Uh, it's just a round box. No, it's my <laughs> it's my um, books that I ordered. Unboxing. I I'm a woman who can read. Which. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, anyway, I got a witch. I don't, you know, you're a witch, a Dude. sandwich. Yeah, I am 100% a sandwich. That's, That's my brand. Right. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin says, Oh, Kevin this, says, is, this is the first ever podcast just us two. Yeah, we never, we like very rarely do anything just us two. It's because it's we rarely awkward. talk. We rarely talk. Um, yeah, I don't like you. Because if we so much as as say hi to each other, Shartney fans poop themselves. <laughs> I was just gonna say, <laughs> Shartney fans actually shart themselves. In this video, Courtney says hi to Shane. Clearly they're married. <laughs> the Shartney the Shartney conspiracies are pretty enjoyable, I will say. I for years have gotten DMs being like, mm -hmm. I know you and Courtney are dating. I see the signs. Yeah, I think the weird ones that I get are like, if I ever look uh, like cute or sexy in a photo, they'll be like, how does Shane feel about this? <laughs> like as if I need your permission. I want that post. comment. I want that comment on every single thing that ever happens. Any news headline <laughs> is just like, oh yeah. Yes. Um, a swarm of locusts have hit India and people be like, I wonder how Shane feels about this. <laughs> just <laughs> oh just anything, God. just. Wonder how Shane feels about that. I love that. Yeah, I mean, I even started this. The sh the Courtmean has started to rise. And there's a there's a version of almost everything. Yeah, um, I've I've seen you and Olivia get Shay ships Livia, together. Shay, Shay Livia. Livia is it? Yeah, uh, I used to I used to like talk a lot about like or or I think forever ago in a YouTube video I was like oh like it's you can't ship us it's weird like. We're basically brother and sister. But like, I don't feel like I agree with that now. Like that feels weird to say in the sense of like, I doesn't like, like you said, like these, these ship videos are funny to me. It's not invading mm -hmm. on my life. I'm not saying please ship us at all. You know, we've like, we're professionals and we literally have to like kiss in videos and stuff. It's not something that, I don't know. It's, I feel bad because a lot of Shartney fans get bullied is what I'm getting at. Like, oh, and like, like, like people are like, you're making it weird. Or yeah, like stop, you're obsessing over something that's not real, which is like, whatever. Like, people are allowed to ship me with anyone they want uh, or anything, uh, ship me with bananas. Cause I love bananas. Yeah, uh, you do. I view it as content. People are making content. They oh, make yeah. the videos where it's like, this is the two of them. This is highlighting yeah, this the fact that possible they're, scenario they're, or theoretical. They're able to get creative and like, and especially with like edits or things like that. Like I've seen, we've seen and, and talked about edits where it's like they make an entire storyline out of our footage, like creating a new story. I am begging you, please make a ship edit of me and Kathy Bates. Make oh my, my dreams come true. But to be real, like I will say, I think the reason it doesn't, it doesn't really make me uncomfortable because it's like, it's just another one of those things. Like, like you said this before, a lot of sometimes fans think that like we are all best friends and that we actually all do hang out every day. And, and they just, there's a lot that, that goes on behind the scenes that people just don't know. And sure. Our, our YouTube life is a very separate thing from our home and our personal lives. Um, and like, obviously some of us hang out a lot, but like others, like it's, it's, it's really no one's business, but also just ultimately people, it's just, it's a reminder of like, yeah, people really have no clue what goes on and it doesn't, For I sure. think it's since it's so, it's not something that hurts me. As long as it's something that doesn't hurt me. I'm like, it's yeah. Ultimately, <laughs> yeah, they're not saying negative things. And so I, it's hard for me to have like a problem with it. Yeah, when I mean, it's like ultimately positive. My first time I was ever in a Smosh second channel video was with me and Ian and Anthony drawing Star Wars characters from memory, and like I was immediately getting comments that I was blowing them under the table, like tr like literally f in that video that I was doing that kind of things. It's like, yeah, that stuff made me uncomfortable. That stuff's That's weird. Rough, yeah. 
But I used to ship Harry Styles and Louis Tomlinson. Like I, mm. I get it. Like I was, I was a, I was a directioner. <laughs> what was your mindset for like when two you were, months? Wait, what was your mindset when you were shipping them? Like, you, did you think it was? Re did you want that to be real? Did you think it was real? So I discovered One Direction on Tumblr, and then like once you go down the rabbit hole, you see the Larry Stylinson edits, and then I was like, what is this? And it's basically just like it was like. The Shartney edits where it's like my first time ever seeing anything like this, where any time because they were they were filmed all the time. They were documented. They were vlogged from mm. the moment they were on America's Got Talent to on to their other while stuff. Like, just while they were times. Shitting, like Harry on the mm -hmm. YouTubes. But like literally so fans would find every second where they looked at each other or touched each other or anything that alluded to like sexual tension was put there and it's like so easy to believe and be like whoa that's crazy like so you believed it was real i was something that i would like to entertain my mind with but i mean i i think that's fine for a teenage for a teenager to yeah to but then that. there was like then there was fans that were like wow they were like, Louis is lying about having this baby. This baby is fake. And he's just doing this to hide the fact that he's actually with Harry right now. Like they were like, oh, yeah. this baby hand in the photo is clearly a copy from this other photo. Like, yeah, weird. That's, that's when, when it gets, it gets unhealthy. In, it gets intense. Well, that's it's a conspiracy it theory. Yeah. It's a conspiracy theory. You're saying something is true and then exactly. pointing out to anything that proves yourself right, which is. Yep an illogical way of going about things. It's not healthy to invest your time in people who don't even know who you are, like in mm. that unhealthy of a way. Right. Like, Cause also it, like, regardless if it's true or not, I, I don't know if they want to keep it private, then you're not going to know. But I don't know, like the, it, it's a weird thing to get angry or to get that obsessed with. Cause yeah, you're never going to really know. The but I think it's a day, fine thing to have fun with. Yeah, just whatever. I don't care. Like it's not it doesn't it doesn't hurt my feelings that somebody thinks I'm dating someone. It is weird. So remember the other day I was looking for cursed images and I was like I was trying to find cursed images of you because I thought that would be funny for GDFN. Mm -hmm. But I ended up finding an article that was like um, talking about like, oh, is Shane single or is does he have a girlfriend? If so, that girlfriend would be very lucky. That was the title of this article. And then I got in a weird rabbit hole of like looking at weird articles about us because there are more and more articles every day about us. There is one that thinks that I've been married before. Uh, well, have you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. They found out. They, they found I have a second family like in Wisconsin. Yeah, there's some weird and like, I don't even know, people are spending like lots of time compiling information on my height, my shoe size, my my marital status, um, how many siblings I have, which there's there's always too many or too little or like random names in there like that I don't know who they are. Like that's a, hilarious. A Kent or something. And I'm like, <laughs> ah, I don't think so. Uh, it's creepy, dude. You have you ever Googled yourself? No. Well, not in a long time, not in years. I don't want to find out. Um, I'm fine with certain misinformation. Like if someone wants to say that I'm six feet tall, hey, <laughs> I'm not going to say it's wrong. <laughs> I might say no comment. Yeah, that's really funny. I There is a lot of like, I have seen like, there is a lot of misinformation that does get thrown around though. Like saying that I was born in Los Angeles. There's a lot that has been weird where it, one what that was on there for that was on the Smosh Wiki for a long time was that my favorite TV show was Once Upon a Time. What? That was on Smosh Wiki, and I was just like, "All right, I don't know about that." See, sure, like, it's possible. Maybe you once mentioned that show, and somebody Probably. was like, "Oh, that must mean he loves that show." Because, like, I will say it's interesting because coming from being a fan in in, in fandoms, and like I was in fandoms, but I never like interacted with other people in the fandom ever. I just mm. absorbed the content and moved on. But like, cause I remember when I was, when I watched, when I watched Smosh, I recognized that Anthony was the cute one, but I would stand Ian because he was the funny one. T. <laughs> and I was like, 
that's because like I Double was always tea. the one I liked. I liked Niall because I felt like not a lot of people liked Niall in One Direction. He was like one of the ones that was liked not as much by like universally. You, you always pick just the the one that's just left out. I just pick yeah. I'm like you know what I dig. I dig you. Hey, I don't know. I don't I, know why. I, I pity the. Sh- out of you no i genuinely <laughs> i genuinely did because it's like you know i think I, I naturally go toward like the underdog you know it's like kind of like one of those situations where i don't know why and then i i would i did see all the all the e anthony shipping stuff and thought that was so crazy like but it but it photoshopping had to be, them to be kissing right and, but it had to be weird because because as you were talking about before of like you don't ultimately know everything that's going on behind camera mm-hmm. you were a huge fan of smosh and then coming and working with them you saw that it's like oh yes they are great yeah. friends but as friendships and as relationships and everything are it's so much there's just so much more going on or not yeah, going it's, on it's like, yeah, it, you know. It's so easy to to like to put them in an, as an idea or in a box because you've never met them or had a conversation with them. Like, because the first time we met Ian and Anthony, they were so chill, like so down to earth, like people. So yeah, and then so so coming from being a fan of things and then now being something that people make fan right. edits about, you have yeah. like when I, I that's why I like. I had a huge appreciation for fan art, like extremely when it when it first started coming my way, because like I appreciated drawing and I was I was a fan girl. So like I got it. I I'll never fully get used to what it feels like to be on this side of that line of mm-hmm. the on the receiving end. Um, yeah, like. I don't know, like like you've seen me in the last year. I just started getting like way crazy anxiety about meet and greets. Like, yeah. I had I had like my first physical panic attack in Australia after mm-hmm. our first uh, uh, convention meetup. That was crazy. At the end of the day, it's it's still a great experience. Going back a little bit, just the last thing I'd want to say on this is just to like take to take a lot of it with a grain of salt. Like, there's so much you can decipher body language and so many things in so many ways. The, the last instance of that that I that I experienced was the first couple podcasts uh, when mm-hmm. we were in quarantine. People were commenting that they were like, I'm really worried about Shane. He looks really depressed. He seems like he's in a really bad Ugh. place right now. I hope he's doing okay. And the, the, the truth was I was very quiet in those early podcasts. But the reason was... One, I was not getting enough sleep. I kept staying up late playing video games and waking (laughs) up too late. But also my podcast setup, my mic was too far away from me. So I had to lean uncomfortably forward and it made speaking just more difficult. So I often ended up just being like, I'm just going to sit back and listen a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But that was the reason. But on camera, it appeared like I was in a really dark place and I was really quiet because I was really sad. I wasn't sad at all. I was actually having great <laughs> days. I just, I just in recording that podcast with that setup, there were other factors yeah, dude. that made me more quiet and not seem as happy. But yeah. I think that's the thing is like, there's nothing wrong with assuming something based off a video and going, oh, yeah. Shane seemed angry there. It's also going, oh, there's a million reasons for that. Maybe he just hadn't had coffee. Totally. Maybe this is their third shoot totally. of, in, of that day and they're burnt out. I don't know. And there's like, there's weird things where it's like, oh, you have no clue how many of the people you're watching on YouTube are currently dealing with a private investigation with a stalker. And that can right. severely affect you. Every Like that's just one of the examples where it's like you, ha- and like they obviously don't want to talk about it because they don't want to bring attention to it. And that's obviously a very random example. No one is dealing with that right now, but it's things like that, that it's like, totally. you really have no clue. Uh, so do you want to get into the shoot, dude? Let's get into the shoot, dude. Let's get into the shoot, dude. 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 Dude, I love shoot, dude, so much. I love shoot, dude. Shoot, dudes are pretty sick. Shoot, dudes are pretty sick. Honestly, shoot, dudes are pretty sick. <laughs> that voice. Honestly, like, I think shit dudes are pretty cool. Hey, would it be okay if I got, can I get, um, can I get a vanilla ice cream cone, but can I also get one of the ice cream bars as well? <laughs> I only have $2, so I hope I can get two. 
I only have two dollars, so if I could get two ice cream balls and the ice cream cone, please. Why is he Sean Connery? Excuse what? me, I'm a baby. If I could have an ice cream cane, please. I'm doing the Britney Bros. He was, was like, hello, I, my, my <laughs> little cat got hit by a call, so I'm coming today to play for, I don't know. Okay. Sean Connery, baby. Okay, Hello, are I'm you a ready? Baby. Yeah. Okay, so this week's shoot dude comes from someone by the name of Percy. So this happened while I was in college. I was madly in love with this guy friend of mine and me being this closeted gay guy, didn't have the guts to do something about it. So I resorted to writing Harry, po Harry Potter fan fiction where the two characters I used represented the two of us. It was basically was the his, love that story. That was his outlet. That was his, his outlet, yes. Get that outlet, honey. It was basically the love story in my head that I wanted us to have. I just finished a chapter update on my laptop while I was in the library when he showed up from behind me to surprise me. He saw my account and it got awkward super fast since my author name was based off him. For example, let's say my crush was Tommy Bo. The username was Bowie Thomas. Ooh. I had no choice but to admit the whole thing and how creepy it was. On top of that, it was also the first time I was coming out to someone, so I was freaking the hell out and ended up crying. Oh my God. He took it pretty well, but he rejected me on the spot since he was straight. He asked me to change the username, understandable, but other than that, everything was okay. He even helped me come out to our other friends after that. I got over my crush on him about a Aww. year after that. I suck at moving on, okay? And I'm happy to say that he'll, he's still one of my best friends to this day. Oh my gosh, Percy. That's a that's a shoot dude followed by a Oh, shoot. Dude. That is a mega shoot dude, but that's that, but That's it's ultimately not... so sweet. That's such yeah. a good friend. That's such a supportive supportive homie. Yeah, like you are still a person to them despite yeah. all the stuff like because sometimes stuff can go south. But dude, I'm so glad you guys stayed friends. Totally relate on taking a while to get over someone as a crush. Um, especially when them finding out did not go the way you wanted it to. Mm -hmm. I'm I, so sorry. And props props to you, man, because that's so many people, completely regardless of orientation, are so bad at accepting if a crush is not into them and being able to remain their friend. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. such a that's such a super skill that shows so much uh, emotional intelligence and like strength of will. Like, that's awesome. That, yeah. those, are two, those are two great people. Exactly. Like he's clearly a good friend that he was also willing to help you come out to, your, to the rest of you guys' friends. Like that is a, that's a true dude. That's a, that's a true friend right true there. True dude. That's you a guys true are, dude. Your guys' friendship is probably worth so much more than, I, I think that's the best outcome. Better than if he was like, oh, I'm attracted to you too. Yeah. And you're in a relationship. I think I think this is the best possible outcome because friendships like that, it's gonna you're gonna have them each other forever. Yeah, best possible friendship outcome. Otherwise, it would have been like, are you writing friendship fiction about me? Whoa, let's kiss. <laughs> like <laughs> we should kiss right now. Right now. But I feel like that would have been. I feel like uh, uh, inevitably, like a romance like that would have been more short lived than the the clearly permanent friendship that you yeah, guys have. Yeah, totally, totally. So I don't know, I'm, I'm all about this. I'm, yeah, I stand, proud of you, Percy. I stand. Dan Percy and your Percy's go. friend. It's dude. nice to hear what Percy Jackson's up to. Have you ever been caught like in the act with a, oh my God, I just realized what you said. Uh, have you ever been caught like, like with something like that? Like, oh, like writing your crush's name somewhere? I or? don't think so. I don't think so, because I don't, I never did that. I never wrote my crush's name. If I had a crush, I kept it so secret and <laughs> tried to convince myself that I didn't have a crush because having a crush can be so uncomfortable. Oh. Especially, especially at me as a teenager thinking I had zero chance. Oh, being I like, that. Uh, I, I might that. as well, I might as well figure out a way to not have this crush oh. than to get crushed. I once made a bracelet that said, I heart Johnny. Uh, and I wore it to school. <laughs> I like uh, thought that was normal. Oh my God. Uh, you basically, you just had a wedding ring on. Be like, this is your, oh, this is yeah. our wedding ring. I wore wedding rings to school. you're gonna give me eventually, school. Johnny. Girls always wore wedding rings to school. Uh, uh, what? That's cool. Great. <laughs> Great. 
I'm going to sure. fight you. Sure. Well, you should wear a red wedding ring. That'd be so cute. I want to see what you look like. <laughs> what? I just want to see what a guy looks like putting on like a straight male, putting on a wedding ring with a gemstone and everything and going like this. I would look incredible. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I want that for you. Okay. Anyways, Stan Larry Stylinson. That's that's the main takeaway is Stan yeah. Harry Stylus Stan Stary Lyliston. Style Louis Louis the Stylison. <laughs> Harry Stylus is God. Anyway. Um thanks for casting this pod with me, Shane. You're a of you're course. a real you're a treat. You're a real piece of shit. <laughs> Anyways, this pod's been nice. <laughs> f you, you fing, you're the worst. Uh, this has been an awful time. This has been an agonizing episode of the Smosh Cast. Um, you know where you know where it is. Wednesdays it's audio. <laughs> hey, you know where it is. Hey, you don't need no building Shut like up. they used to. Shut up. Wednesdays is the full audio episode. Fridays is the full video episode with bleep sensor words and pretty faces. Rate us five stars if you mm -hmm. ship us. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Or if you ship Larry Stylinson. Or if you ship. Comment, comment your favorite. Comment who you think is the most powerful ship. I yeah, think it it's, doesn't have to be just Smosh either. Koa, well, sure, but okay. the Smosh oh, just, ones are high up there. No, I, I think it'd be whatever. Because if you want to ship me and Kathy Bates, <laughs> that is the ultimate. <sighs> ship me and water. I'm a huge fan of water. I love water, Shut water loves up. me. Together, we're so powerful. But probably amongst Smosh, Damien and I's ship is pretty powerful. Koa's up there. Koa's iconic. Koa's hard to beat. Koa might be the strongest. Cortivia's uh, pretty good. Cortivia's good, but Koa, Koa's pretty good. Anyways, uh, this was you great. You know where it is. You know where it is. <laughs> hey, you know where it is. <laughs> Bye. Bye.